It was a fast cloud, and this was just the beginning. There were three of us on the muscle. Royston. You're Harrison. And you're dead. We got a message. You and your boys just quit the numbers. Tell your collectors they write no more policies till they hear from us. And you? Well, just don't cover any more bets. You try, we cut you down. That's the message. A new crowd's in charge, as of now. Yeah, who? Oh. Don't ask me. I just work here. Thanks. Nothing. No, 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 no. That's it, Becky. I'm gonna hit him! I said that's it. They have jets to Miami now. A couple hours, a man can live in the sun. Take a tip, Harrison. Take a trip. There's been a change in signals, Paul. We're not touching Harrison's numbers, Banks. But we're all set up to move in on them. This just came through from Central Intelligence. Three imported gunmen out of Detroit, huh? Did Harrison bring them in? Oh? William B. Kane. Ex-con, ex-gunsel, you name it. We've had him under surveillance ever since he got into town. So far, everything's been legit. He's bought some businesses, some buildings, real estate. I can even give you a shirt size. But now he's tipped his hand. He's moving in on Harrison to take over the numbers racket. Looks like the morgue's gonna have some busy days coming up. We've got to flush this guy out into the open. We've got to kick him from behind his legitimate fronts. If we don't, we'll have big time crime in this city for keeps. Does headquarters have a make on these three gunsels? Not yet. Except one of them is a police officer working undercover. He infiltrated the mob in Detroit. Got himself the reputation of being a real rough guy. A gun for hire. Pretty cute. He worked his way in with Kane's Detroit buddies, then got himself sent down here as muscle for Kane. Right. His act must be pretty good. But one thing. Yeah? Where does he buy his insurance? When you're working undercover, there's no such thing as insurance. You're alone on that tightrope, where any move can be your last. Kane, Kane knew me as Fred McLeod, the name I had taken when I infiltrated the mob. I was one of his boys, he thought. We started to tape the town, and tape it good. We moved in on the small-time setup Harrison had been running. Then we began to set up a network of new collectors, little guys who were too scared to refuse. I didn't like what I was doing, but when you work undercover, you've got to do a lot of things you don't like. A policy book every three blocks. Those were Kane's orders. Make it easy for the working stiff to bet his dollar a day on the numbers. For the housewife to invest her two bits on a ticket. The odds are a thousand to one against them. Where's the boss? What do you want? We conducted a survey. It shows you have a fine little place here for booking bets. Bets? What bets? Policy numbers, you know. Gambling. We felt that with your last month's net income hitting only 200, you'd be interested. How do you know my income? Our little survey. Get out. You'd better play the game, Bron. What do they have to do to play your game? Collect policy bets in the neighborhood. People drop in to place a bet. That's all. He picks up 10% of the action. And it doesn't interfere with his regular work. And what's 10%? Around here, maybe 50, $100 a week. Papa, $100 a week? Well, why not? Go in the back. I will take care of this. Like everything else. You're being stupid. Why don't you try hitting them? You're so big and so honorable and so nothing. You see the shame, the filthiness that you bring with you? Get out! All of you! No, 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 no! Cool it. Move out or I take you too. 
I open him, Fred. You say. You both flipped. We drift. Later, that gun of yours is going to strap all three of us in a barbecue stool. We'll sign Braun, but not with a heater. We'll let the girl swing it for us. I told you not to show your faces around here. Harrison's not quick on the scare. When he tried to hit us, Packy got sliced. Nothing, Mr. Kane. Doc said in a day or two, I'm back in business. Look, when Detroit sent you down here, they said you could handle yourselves. <laughs> now you let some lightweight like Harrison gun you. We made a mistake, Mr. Bandera. In my operation, there are no mistakes, McLeod. If you want to get chilled, go ahead. Do it on your own time. Now, you paid good dough, so earn it. I gave you one week to lock up the town, so lock it up. What about Harrison? Do what comes natural. If he gets in your way, blast him. If he doesn't, forget him. If he's still in town after the takeover, we'll dump him in the gutter. Clear enough? Very clear. Everything going on schedule? Everything's moving fine. There's a holdout here and there. They'll fall into line. Maybe that brawn at the laundromat won't. Then muscle him. Make an example of him. Sometimes that helps the others to make up their minds quicker. You want him hit, boss? If he's a hard nose, hit him. I want no holdouts, you understand? I'll take care of brawn. And another thing, I don't want any of you coming here. You got that straight? Yes, Mr. Kane. Get out. Fred. He sure stands on velvet, don't he? He sure does, Turk. He's come a long way. Ten years ago, he was just a gun for Dutch Connie. Maybe there's hope for us. Thank you. Hey. My friends, isn't this a free country? Then pour more freely. <laughs> Ink still wet on her driver's license and look at her. She's a setup for that guy. Bother you? I got a daughter her age. <laughs> Bye, Tender. A little service, please. <laughs> hey, ain't that the kid from the laundry joint? Don't you wash the empty glasses, or do you just polish them? You've had your last drink, Sonny. Now go on home. You're mussing his jacket. Who are you? I supply the jackets. We like them neat. Hey, I know you. You're the big bad man. Well, let's see, huh? Uh, uh, uh. He'll shoot you, won't you? That's the best suggestion I've had all night. <laughs> oh, nice. Very, very nice. Here, for you. Down you come. <laughs> I'll see that she gets home. Who wants to go home? Uh, give me the check. Friend, it's on the house. Want to? Want to? Why me? Why the kid at the bar? Why the big rush? <laughs> well, can't you tell? I'm Cinderella. Don't tell me it's past pumpkin time. Isn't it? You sound like my father. You married? Nope. That's what they all say. You talk a great game. Talk? What good is talk? Oh, I saw how you drink. for effort.
Been a ball, Cinderella. Laura. Oh, shut up. Look, kid. A lot of us come from places we aren't proud of. Don't let a neighborhood get you down. Oh, sure, you can talk. Look at you, you've got it made. Boy, whoever said crime doesn't pay, it sure does. Ever see a rich Sunday school teacher? Are you gonna see me again? I don't know. Please kiss me. I don't even know your name. Night, kid. of us die between midnight and 4 a.m. than any other time. It was almost two. Time to make the next move. Time to play the underworld's most dangerous game, the double cross. Harrison. Well, well, well. I came to talk a deal. You just can't trust anybody these days, can you? Except me. How would you like to take Kane for a million bucks in one week, next week? And he'd never figure out who or how. I know the way you can do it. Interested? Maybe. Go ahead, talk. <laughs> To number 389, and tomorrow. You scatter the bets? Like buckshot. Too many payoffs in any one spot, Kane will tumble right away. We bet on 389 from here to Indiana, 50 different spots. But not too much in any one spot. 20 bucks tops. Altogether, $1,000. At a 601 payoff. Not a bad score for one day. It's not all profit. You maybe have to dump 50 to 100 grand tomorrow to change the pair of mutual totals. Me and our boys, we still got enough in the sock to hand. Anyway, after the first day, we're playing on their money. We get in and out fast, five days of play. No more. And no more meets till this is over. If anything goes wrong, I'll call you, tell you where. Just remember my cut, starting the day after tomorrow. Delivered exactly like I told you. You'll call them, baby. And we better trust each other, Harrison. All the way home. Sure, why not? Louise. Go live in his pocket. Don't let him spot you. I'll be giving him a little cash in a few days. First, I gotta know where he buries it. Then? Then, bury him. In the numbers racket, the winning number is picked from the tote board at a racetrack. You get enough boys at the track, with enough money, at the right time, and they make their bets to juggle the numbers. By the end of the day, number 389 cost Kane's crowd a fortune. My share filled a briefcase. You go for into a vault? Christmas club. I took mine early this year. Here. Keep it, Turk. You too, Packy. Yeah, why? I'm gonna take the town. You and the Turk, you're gonna help me. I got a little business on the side. Now I'm ready to move it out front. First, I've gotta leave Kane leaning. I wanna cut you boys in. Turk? You say so, Fred. Packy? Okay. Break out the bottle, Turk. All these years I've been around the numbers, I never made a payoff like that in one day. It just ain't mathematical. 
Somebody maybe got a system. <sighs> Ain't no system can beat the numbers. Six hundred grand in one day. Yeah. Tell him I'm busy. All right, all right, send him in. One of those Detroit guns all steamed up about something. Make it fast, we got trouble. He got bigger. Al's getting set to tie a bag on you and he's already got something going. Something where he hit the jackpot today. A fix. No system beats the numbers, but a fix does. Keep talking, Packy. The Turk and I stayed in. He watched TV. I watched the clock. I could think of all kinds of company we might be getting any minute. One in particular I'd never have thought of. Who is it? It's me, Laura. I came because... Yeah, I know. You came to kiss me goodbye. You're running away from all that dirty laundry. You bet I'm running away, but I didn't come to kiss you goodbye. Joe? Packy. Yeah, Packy. Kane wants to see us tonight. Figure we ought to go along to we're set to take over. Ain't that the smart thing, Fred? Yeah, sure, Packy, sure. Tell you what, the Turk and I'll meet you at Bronze Laundromat, half an hour. Why there? Well, he's still holding out. Well, impress Kane, what a good job we're doing. Okay, it's a meet. I never liked the guy. Chilling him's fine and dandy with me. This is my takeout. This time you watch, I show you how to fix a double cross. We got a job. Can it wait? No. Well, couldn't you send him? I don't leave, Fred. That's how I stay alive. Well, my father has slapped me around for the last time. You're okay, baby. Are you glad I'm here? Sure. You just gave me a great idea. We're gonna kill a couple of birds with one stone. Your old man's been holding out on us. Oh, don't even talk about him. He's hopeless. Yeah, he slapped you around. I don't like that. Do you like it, Turk? No, I don't like it. You see, baby, we've got to teach him he shouldn't slap people around. Please, just don't even talk about him. Forget him. No, we can't do that. First we fix him, and then it's just you and me and the Turk. We're going to live. We're going to get around. Well, you don't mean... He's my father. Listen, Cinderella, and listen good. Now, who's number one on your list, me or your old man? You know how I feel about him. Just checking. Oh, it's okay, baby. Uh, you don't have to worry about him. How about that guy, Turk? He doesn't want her running around with guys and drinking. Yeah, with me, baby, the sky's the limit. It's just one great, big, beautiful world. Miss McLeod, there's a laundromat on Elm Street on the south side. Bronze laundromat. Meet me there in uh, 20 minutes. Yeah, it's important. It's all right, Turk. It's our new partner. I figured you ought to meet him. You put on your Sunday best, baby. We'll be back inside an hour. You and uh, I are going to paint the town. Clean the spades. Where are we going? That was our pal, McLeod. We're gonna meet him. Like I say, bring the Black Queen. We're gonna pin it on his chest. I don't worry none. 
I take them as they come. Ain't that the way? Yeah, sure, but uh, tonight more than ever, huh? I don't know about that packet. He cross us, I burn him. Put down that bat, Bron. You're out of your league. Turk, behind that curtain. There's gonna be a shooting. Get it done. You and me, Bron. I'm on the menu, too. If I have to turn my back to save us, I don't want you to beat my head in with that bat. Why should I believe you? Because we're both in the same spot. We're both banking on Laura. Flat, Harrison. I see the Dutchman's still on his feet. Uh huh. Last them. What are you waiting for? You. You know, McLeod, I can take you any time. Time's running out, Packy. No, 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 no. Out the back. Wait! You do not have to die. If you keep your gun pointed to the ground, I shall kill this other man. Then I will go. If you try to stop me, then I shall kill you too. Turk! You heard him. on her, it paid off. Laura! Laura! With her father's life at stake, there had been no question of her decision. She had called the police. It was a clear night, clear for seeing and clear for thinking. I thought about myself shaking inside, trying to walk a tightrope across a jungle of hungry tigers. I thought about Cain. That was the good part. I thought about the Turk. It was hard to keep from crying, even if he had been one of us. And I thought about Laura, too. At least she had made it back to the right side. Maybe more than all the rest of it, that was the best part. <laughs> 